Please kneel. <clears throat> God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the light and life of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And we invite our children to come forward for a moment. The Lord be with you. Okay, I'm ready. Jesus said in today's reading, be ready. So I'm ready. What does it look like I'm ready for? Winter. <laughs> did I get it wrong? I did? Wonder what Jesus was talking about when he said, be ready. Well, I thought I was going to be ready today. I got ready for cold weather, and I got it really wrong, didn't I? Because it's hot weather, isn't it? Yeah, it's even kind of hot weather in here. So Jesus says be ready, but he doesn't mean be ready for the weather. Mm -mm. He means be ready for God. Be ready for God. How? Well, how do we get ready for God? We get ready by being a good friend to someone. We get ready by showing someone God's love, by being nice to them, by being generous. We get ready by praying, by praying for ourselves and praying for other people. So, what Jesus says today is be ready be ready to show God's love to everybody around you. Not just some, everybody. And you know when we do these things, when we show other people how much God loves them, it makes God really, really, really happy. And we want to make God happy, don't we? We do. Yes, we do. So, let's show other people that we are ready not by the kind of clothes we're wearing or being ready for the weather, but we are ready to show people God's love. Okay? Now let's fix our hands and pray together. Dear God, help us to always be ready to show your love to other people. Help us to always be ready for you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Be, God. Let me get out of this thing. A reading from Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, 
O oh Lord God, what will you give me, for I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain hope for victory. Despite its great strength, it cannot save. <laughs> Truly your eyes upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love, to deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for in your holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that had foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, 
and as the innumerable grains of the sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you in peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know those portable signs? The ones that sit in front of churches? They have sayings on them. Some make sense. Others do not. But it's hard to ignore them, you know? Some, though some of the sayings that I read on those, so, uh, those signs causes me to cringe. Signs like, Jesus is coming, be ready. That one is closely related to other statements like, if you die today, do you know that you'll go to heaven? Or, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Questions like these are partly inspired by today's gospel lesson. Because today, Jesus says, be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be ready. Be alert. Be prepared. You never know when the Son of Man is coming. This passage is often misused. It is used as a hammer to be beat people over the head, hoping to scare them into heaven by saying things like, Hurry, make a decision for Christ because if Jesus comes back and you're not ready, you will roast for eternity on God's barbecue spit. All this misses the point, misses the whole point of today's gospel reading. They miss the point and they serve to elevate our anxiety levels and blood pressures as we picture God as that big old mean guy up there somewhere 
looking down from heaven saying, Oh my, all those folks down there are slacking off. I think I'll surprise them and come back right now and clean house. That's what I'll do. My friends, this is not the God that Jesus wants us to know. Listen to the very first line of today's gospel reading. Jesus tells his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock. Do not be afraid. Have no fear. These words set the context for what follows in today's lesson. So, why should we have no fear? Why should we not be afraid? Jesus tells us, It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. These words are the background for our understanding of today's gospel. Jesus speaks to his disciples, his little flock. He also speaks to us, to us as a church and also to us as individuals, to all the baptized. He urges us not to worry, not to be afraid. God has given us the kingdom and he has given it to us already not just in some vague future time, but today. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is now. The kingdom is in the present. No, Jesus is not putting us on the spot, asking us to accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. Rather, he is telling us he has already accepted us as his personal sinners. Jesus is not telling us to get ready for the afterlife so much as he is encouraging us to be ready for this time, the lifetime in which we live today. For Christ can pop up anytime in unexpected ways and in unexpected places. With God, you can expect the unexpected. With God, you can expect the unexpected. Think about it. This is a God who came to earth not as a mighty warrior. Surprise! He came as a tiny babe in a manger. Jesus did not save the world as a conquering king. Surprise! He came as a suffering servant dying on the cross. And when they went to the tomb, surprise! He was not there. He was resurrected. Yes, with God, we can expect the unexpected. Like God claiming us sinners as his own, surprising us, surprising us by giving us the kingdom, even though we know we don't deserve it. God continues coming to us in unexpected places, in unexpected ways. He comes to us and comforts us when we need him most. When we are struggling to stay afloat, struggling to stay afloat in life, we read scripture, or we come to worship, or we pray, or someone picks up the phone and makes an unexpected call, and peace, peace settles over us. Peace that comes from God and God alone. God comes to challenge us when we become too comfortable or when our action or our inaction separates us from him or from someone else. These are the times God puts someone or something in our path, causing us to pause and to ponder. Sometimes we hear a whispering voice inside of us, and no, it's not Jiminy Cricket. We call it the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit says, hey, you, you are getting complacent. You come to worship and you sit in the same place every Sunday. You hardly ever greet anyone that you don't already know. And you are giving the same offering you've given for the last 10 years. Or the Spirit comes to us and says, you know, you should really pick up the telephone and call your friend or your sister, you know, the one with whom you've had a falling out. 
God comes and God calls us to change direction. He calls us to do a new thing. Better yet, he calls us to stop doing the old thing. God comes to us time and again to challenge us, to call us, to comfort us. Think for a moment. Almighty God is all-powerful. He holds us in the palm of his hand. He could demand or force us to do anything. Instead, he woos us. He loves us. He gives us opportunities to work with him. He places signs in our path. Sometimes we see them and they make sense. Other times they do not. Now comes the part of the sermon in which I address this, the end of my ministry, with you here. Earlier I mentioned those signs in front of churches. Well, while driving down from Somerville one morning, I saw a sign in front of a church. And as I said, usually I can't figure them out. I drive several miles trying to figure out what they said. But this one made a lot of sense to me. This one said, If you are busy paddling... You won't have time to rock the boat. If you are busy paddling, you won't have time to rock the boat. Now, the sign reminds me, it reminds us God's workers, Jesus' disciples, can be identified by their actions. Yes, Christ's disciples are busy doing God's business. God's workers are the congregational boat rowers. Now, there are others, the complainers. They are the boat rockers, and we know what they do. Of course, there's another category, another category of congregational folks. They are the boat riders. Each congregational boat usually has a generous number of boat riders. Now, boat riders, these people like to watch the rowers. And boat riders will even take credit for what is going on sometimes. And, and you know, boat riders also kind of enjoy watching and hearing the boat rockers. Boat rockers can be very entertaining, you know, especially if you have a lot of time on your hands with nothing to do. If you're a rider, you can always get out of the boat. If it starts rocking too violently, sure, you can get out and change boats. We see people do that in church, don't we? When conflict becomes uncomfortable, they change churches. There you have it. Rowers, riders, rockers. Three kinds of church disciples. Do we have all these at St. Matthew's? I'll let you answer that question. But the big question is, the real question is, rower, rider, rocker, which are you? Are you pulling an oar, volunteering, teaching, singing, serving, tithing? If the answer is no, then you are a passenger, or, oh my heavens, you may be a boat rocker. I urge all of us, let's grab an oar. Let's start pulling. Now we've got to remember to pull the same direction as the other rowers. If half of us pull this direction and the other half pull that direction, We'll be dead in the water. We have so much to be proud of. We do, don't we? We have so much to be proud of here at St. Matthew's. But there is so much more we can do. So much more we can do if everyone is rowing the same direction. We have a congregational mission. We have a congregational vision. And soon, happily, Pastor Childers will arrive. 
So, my friends, now is the time. Now, right now. Let us work for harmony. Let us work for unity in Christ Jesus. Let the world see you proudly pulling an oar as a disciple in Christ's church. And let us together continue to make St. Matthew's Lutheran Church a beacon shining God's holy light to the world. Amen.
You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Deborah and Richard and Laura Christian and their shepherd stands with them and also with John and Julie Thornton and I believe I remember that Elizabeth has to be their shepherds also. She's the one that brought you to us. And Chad, uh, Chad Harmon and Mark Balknight and their sponsors, Julie, or uh, yeah, Julie Blair and that family, the ones over there, <laughs> whom we welcome as new disciples into the life and ministry of this congregation. Deborah, Thomas, and Laura have been disciples of our Savior Lutheran Church in Greenville, South Carolina. Chad and Mark have been disciples in Reformation Lutheran Church in Columbia, South Carolina. Julie has been a disciple at Weddington United Methodist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, and John, a disciple of Sharon United Methodist Church in Charlotte. Please stand. Together with our new sisters and brothers in Christ and in union with Christ's holy church, we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was consumed by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through our words and through our deeds, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Deborah, Richard, Laura, Chad, Mark, Julie, John, our sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism amongst God's people in this place? If so, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Deborah, Richard, Laura, Chad, Mark, Julie, and John in their life in Christ? <coughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks for Deborah, for Richard, and Laura, and Chad, and Mark, and Julie, and John, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in service to others. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Face the congregation. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, God is the strength of those who believe and the sure hope for those who doubt. 
Let us draw near in faith, asking the Lord to hear our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. Please kneel as you are able. Faithful God, encourage your church and new ventures of faith. Help us to start new congregations. Help us to create new ministries. Help us to have new conversations and partnerships. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Creating God, the abundance of your creation fills us with awe and delight. Call us daily to be vigilant and responsible stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, calm the fears that produce wars, prejudice, and injustice. Provide us with governments, and leaders, and peacemakers to be models of cooperation and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Restoring God, comfort all who long for relief from circumstances of grief or sickness, especially Jean and Lilius, Lillian Salvo and their family, Bill Condon and his family, Charlotte Stamire and our son Jim and his family. Bless hospitals, mental health facilities, and all places of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Sheltering God, we pray for those who cannot join us in worship today, especially Lenny Freeberg and Mary Harkin. Comfort them with your love. We also ask your special blessings upon all who serve in our military, especially Kirk Winmuller and Michael Weisskopf. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Steadfast God, we pray for Pastor Childers and his family and all those in life transitions that bring anxiety. Heal those who are hurt by broken promises and sustain them with your never-ending love. Lord, in your mercy. What joys, celebrations, or concerns do we lift to the Lord today? Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the saints who now enjoy unfailing treasure in heaven, and we rejoice that we are united with them in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace.
wait patiently for him, and he shall give thee thy heart's desires, and he shall give thee thy heart's desires. Commit thy way unto trust in him, commit thy way unto him, and trust in him, and fret not thyself because of evil doers, O oh, rest in the Lord, wait patiently. For him, wait patiently for him, who oh, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him, and he shall give thee thy heart's desires, and he shall give. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, sign of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Christ's death, his resurrection, and his ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father... Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. And when we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ.
the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Pastor Blaylock, on February 7th, you returned to be interim pastor of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church to proclaim God's word, to baptize, to teach, to announce God's forgiveness, and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and trouble and at the death of loved ones. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you and Ida have been and will continue to be important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ. 
in our service to this community, and in God's mission to the whole world. As you conclude this interim call, we say farewell to you as our pastor, and we pray for God's blessings for the future. People of God, members and friends of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, do you release Pastor James Blaylock from service as your pastor? We do, and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. Pastor Blaylock, do you recognize and accept the completion of your ministry as pastor of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church? I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with the abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor James Blaylock among the people of God at St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, and for the presence and participation of both Jim and Ida as disciples in his congregation. Because you watch over our going out and our coming in, Bless, we pray, this time of ending and beginning. Because you surround your people in every time and place, keep us close in your love. Because you accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial, prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive, for that has fallen short of your will for us. Bless and prosper the good that we have accomplished in your name. Assist Pastor Blaylock, Ida, and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you give to us. As Pastor Blaylock and Ida have been a blessing to us, so now send forth from this calling, confident that you are with them and that your spirit guides them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go over and eat. So we're going to say a blessing together that we all know from our childhood so that the children among us can join in. It's the one that begins, God is great. God is great. God is good. Let us bless him for our food. By his hands we all are fed. Give us our daily bread. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.